If you're ever confronted by an army of pears, you know what you gotta do. Preserve them. It's easy. All you need is some mason jars and a little bit of know-how. I'm here to show you how you too can become a connoisseur of preserves. I'm Siloy Oliveira and I'm a gardener interested in self-sufficiency. Follow me in my journey towards sustainability in my suburban homestead. The first step to making pear preserves is to wash your jars well. This is especially important if you're not using brand new jars. You will also want to sterilize your jars. Put water to boil inside of a large pot and carefully, using proper utensils, drop your mason jars into the water. Leave them for 5 minutes. Remember to only use mason jars that are approved and made specifically for home canning. Make sure that the jars do not have fracture lines, cracks, or chips. That can compromise the seal and the viability of your preserve. While you wait for your jars to sterilize, select the best pears, wash them well, and cut them into eight pieces. If you want to peel them, you can, but I prefer not to. You also want to remove the core with the seeds. That area can cause bitterness in your preserve, and is best left out. As you cut them, put them under water to prevent browning. Canning your own food might seem difficult or even dangerous. And if certain guidelines are not followed, it can be. But by properly following the instructions and processing your food in the right way, it shouldn't be a problem. Carefully remove the jars from the pot and let them air dry. Unlike vegetables that can be a bit tricky to can and need a pressure canner to do so, pears can be preserved using a water bath canner. For a medium syrup, use 6 cups of water to 3 cups of sugar. I'm using pure cane sugar. For a more natural alternative, you might want to find recipes that use fruit juice instead of sugar. The sugar will help stabilize the color and the shape, as well as improve the flavor of the pears. Stir the syrup and bring it to a boil. In order for the pears to be shelf stable and to prevent spoilage, they need to be in an airtight, acidic environment. In such a sterile, acidic environment, bacteria cannot grow and harmful things like botulism should not develop. Drain the pears and using a slotted spoon, carefully put them in the boiling syrup. Be very careful with boiling syrup, it can cause serious burns. Let the pears in the syrup return to a boil. That should take about 5 minutes. Do not overcook them, otherwise they will be mushy. They still need to pass through the water canning process, and if you overcook them at this point, they will be mushy and fall apart. As soon as it returns to boil, remove the pot from the heat and start packing in your pears. A wide mouth funnel is essential. It will help you not to get sticky syrup in the lips of the jars. If there is residue between the lid and the jar, it will cause the lid not to properly seal. Use a spoon to assist in packing the pears to ensure a snug fit. This recipe uses the hot packing method, which is usually considered safer to do. This video is only showing my own personal experience. I am not an expert on canning. Improperly canned food can be severely harmful. Know what you're doing and do your own research. After you have finished packing the pears, fill the jars up with syrup, leaving a half inch air space on top. Dip a clean paper towel in boiling water and use it to clean the lips of the jars. It is very important that the lips are clean. Put your lids inside of hot water but not boiling. Using a magnetic tool, pick them up and carefully position them over the lips of the jars, ensuring a good seal. Remember to always use new lids. Never reuse lids. Screw in your lid rings, but do not over tighten. Using a jar holder, pick up the jars 
and carefully place them inside of boiling water. If you live in lower altitudes, process your pints for 20 minutes and your quarts for 25 minutes. Start counting when the water returns to a boil. If you live in higher altitudes, you will need to refer to a recipe. Heat and pressure will build up inside of the jars, which should sterilize the food in it. After you're done processing, put your jars in a dry, draft-free place. Leave them overnight. Remove the rings and see if the lids have attached themselves to the jar. The safety indicator should be dimpled down. If the lids pop up, it's gone bad. Keep your jars in a dry, cool place. They should keep for a few months. And when you open one, it should smell clean and fresh. Join me next time. Remember to send in questions, comments, or tips to seedofchoice at gmail.com. And don't forget to subscribe to Suburban Homestead.